What's up guys, BC coming at you from the Amplified Studios. Today we're going to talk about the AEW Dynamite rating from this past Wednesday that absolutely shook an entire industry to its core. 1.175 AEW Dynamite this week. Now BC is a numbers guy. I follow numbers, statistics. They usually always have a trajectory where we can... We can kind of find out, at least in the vicinity, of what the number is going to be for every show. Raw, SmackDown, NXT, AEW, and anywhere in between. Numbers usually give us a good glimpse, and there's usually a trajectory. AEW shattered. Shattered any expectation that we could have had, whether great or not so great expectations were thrown to the wayside they were ran over they were lit on fire completely disregarded bc had this show pegged at 992,000, just under a million based on the trajectory with the cm punk and mox championship unification match the champion the interim champion we can only have one and that only pulled in, pulled in 1,049,000 viewers guys it barely went over a million that was cm punk versus mox title and title and that barely got over a million and then the next week after all out or at least after the all out pay-per-view and everybody was was buzzing about it are they going to fire punk are they going to suspend cm punk are they going to announce his injury? What's going on with Omega and the Bucks? There was all these question marks. We thought it was going to be a huge rating. At least bigger than Mox versus Punk, 1,049,000. Instead, they lost nearly 30,000. They were a million twenty some odd thousand. So they lost viewers. And once again, they barely got over a million. So then you had this past Wednesday in... Let's be honest, I mean, with CM Punk uh, not there, Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, and the story kind of fizzling out, we know what happened, we know their suspensions, we know they're not going to be there, that's all we need to know. So you thought, I mean, if they were losing viewers anyway over the week, still over a million, but they were starting to go back downwards, you had to figure that this show was going to be back into the 900,000s. If they stayed over a million, it wasn't going to beat Mox and Punk from a few weeks ago or even last week where everybody had to find out about the news, right? Punk, Omega, Bucks, the whole story, the crazy story from All Out and the media scrum and the backstage brawl in the locker room. If those could not pull in a big rating over a million, they just crept over a million, then this show this Wednesday was not going to be anywhere near topping those numbers. Not only did they top it, they shattered the last several weeks. They pulled in nearly 150,000 more viewers than the past several weeks. And again, that's Box versus Punk title and title. This is the news coming out of AEW All Out. And last night's show, or Wednesday night's show, pulled in nearly 150,000 more viewers. I, I mean, that's... If you follow this stuff like BC does, numbers-wise, I mean, this is, to say shocking would be an understatement. I was live yesterday on this channel, a live stream, thanks to you guys, man. We had so much fun. Uh, one of the best streams we've done in a long time, for sure. And while we were live, that number broke. And I'm live trying to hold it together. I'm like, I'm trying to run a live stream but at the same time, I'm shocked at what I am reading. I thought there was a mistake, right? There was a malfunction, right? There's going to be a story that comes out and says, wait, we were wrong. It's happened in the past. So BC was trying to find any semblance of, of falsity. Not that I wanted Tony Khan and AEW to do bad, but I just didn't believe the number. It was just not believable. And in Brandon Thurston, who I go by, we're going to go over quarterlies. Thanks to Brandon Thurston. Thanks to WrestleNomics. Uh, they put together these, these sheets, and it's really easy for people like BC to show you guys what I am talking about. But they all confirmed the number. And I was live, and I was just shook by what I was reading, 1.175. There's just no... 
uh, there was no telling that they were going to pull in 150,000 viewers. I don't know where they came from. Were they laying dormant? Were they trapped in a basement or an attic or a closet somewhere? Where was 150,000 fans hiding? And what on this show needed to be seen more than Mox and Punk a couple of weeks ago? Or the post-AEW fallout for All Out? Like, what in this show? And when I checked the quarterlies, which we're going to go over... I became even more shocked because this show at never, never at one point did any of these quarterlies, any quarter, that's every 15 minute period, guys, eight quarters in all, never did they fall under a million. In fact, what we're about to go over is most likely going to shock you just as much. We'll start right from the jump. Check this quarterly sheet out. First, before we break it down, check out how we started just under 1.2 million at a 1198. Now, look at the end of the show, guys. 1188. They only dropped 10,000. I mean, you fluctuated a little bit throughout the show, but from top to bottom, they only lost 10,000 viewers. That rarely happens, usually throughout the show, and you see that dotted line. Uh, that WrestleMics has put up uh, big props to them. They make this so easy for BC to translate this to you guys. So big props, props to WrestleNomics. But you see that dotted line, man. That's you, you, you tail off. You fade away throughout the night. It's just what happens in wrestling shows, and usually for shows, period, um, or at least events like this. You're gonna tamper, taper off. You're just going to. It sucks. The The goal, the objective for a promoter is try to put out banger content toward the end of the show so that people need to stick around, not just want to. And hopefully you have an awesome cliffhanger at the end of the show so they need to come back the next week. That's the only hope you can have for a promoter and that's what they should be doing. But for instance, was it a week or two weeks ago? Maybe it was last week. Wheeler, Utah versus Dan Garcia, I believe. And you guys will see that they lost over 300,000 viewers from the top of the show to the end. A lot of fans just were not captivated by Wheeler, Utah, and Daniel Garcia. Um, that's not shade. That, that's the numbers, right? We saw the quarterlies, and they lost hundreds of thousands of people. Well, if you see this Wednesday, they only lost 10,000. That is mind-boggling. Again, if you follow this stuff every week like BC... And even if you don't follow it every week, you see this and you see just almost a straight line. There's only one real dip. And unfortunately, that's the ladies. Women's wrestling just doesn't get a lot of love, at least not here in the States. And that's actually sad because women wrestling is actually at its best of all time. And that's not shade over to the Mae Youngs or the, the, the Moolahs, or even the Alundra Blazes, even Trish Stratus and Lita in their era, the wrestlers today are just, it's, it's a different breed. And unfortunately, they don't get the time, they don't get the care. And because the ratings are usually like that, the promoters get scared to give them the time and care. So it's a vicious cycle and the women never get the, their due diligence. They never get the proper attention that they deserve. So unfortunately, um, the lowest rated segments of the week on every wrestling show are usually, and unfortunately again, the women. And it's something that people have to get together and find out how can we solve this problem. But that's the only real dip. And even the ladies stayed over a million. That shows you just how outrageous in a good way for AEW that this number is. If it sounds like I'm still shocked a day later, I'm still shocked a day later. So right from the jump, you see John Moxley and Sammy Guevara at a 1198. They start the show. Now, usually people say, okay, uh, do I need to put down the remote or not? Unfortunately, a shitload of people usually say, no, I do not. And they start flipping the channel. Guys here. Most people said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch this match. Something about Mox and Sammy Guevara, I'm all in for, man. And that's what they did. It leaked into the Q2 segment, the last four minutes of Moxley and Guevara. So they kept that audience. They only dipped. The dip was 12,000 people from Q1 to Q2. That is not bad at all. That's really fucking good. 
Um, and then you went into MJF, which I'm sure kept that audience. MJF cutting another fucking killer promo. MJF is a rating success anyway. He always has been. I always tell my audience, and if you're new to the channel, I'll say it again real quick. But I always tell my audience that if you followed CM Punk and MJF's ratings before they started putting CM Punk at the Q1 segment at the start of the show, MJF was actually the he was the number one ratings grabber, even over CM Punk. It wasn't until Punk started going to the Q1 where MJF started be, becoming the second biggest ratings grabber. But MJF was always uh, the big ratings winner on that show. And it shows you yet again that he was able to keep that audience, if not draw more people to it. He handed the microphone over to Stokely Hathaway, and he starts introducing his firm. Now, this really shocked BC to another level, because I thought that that... I'm glad they were establishing the firm, the group. But I felt it dragged. I mean, it, it felt, it was only, what, five, six, maybe seven minutes, uh, seven minutes, man. It, it felt like it was 17 minutes, 18, 19 minutes, 20 minutes. <laughs> it felt like it went on and on. But guys, they went up 2,000 viewers. That doesn't seem like a lot to you guys, but for your Q3 to go up 2,000 to a 1188, again, that's usually unheard of. Or you have to have something that's like really captivating. Stokely Hathaway's firm on the baton handoff from MJF. That was able to not only keep your audience, but gain 2,000. And then you went into Jungle Boy and Jay Lethal at the tail end of Q3. They only lost 1,000 viewers by the time that match was over in Q4. Q3, one one eight eight. As you see in Q4... Um, they only went down 1,000 to 1187. Again, that is, that's astronomically awesome if you're fucking Tony Khan. I mean, you're now into Q4 and you realize that you've only fell off 11,000 viewers from the start of the show. Again, this is unheard of, guys. Um, and that was the last four, Q4, last four minutes of Jungle Boy and Lethal. Um, Jay Lethal. Jungle Boy and Jay Lethal. Did I say Jay, Jay Lethal is one of my boys, man? One of the best wrestlers in the world, I feel. And I hope he starts stringing together W's and AEW. That's a separate story. Let's keep this going, man. That was the last four minutes in Q4 of that match. Luigi Primo was also in Q4. So you can make the argument that Luigi Primo is a ratings draw. <laughs> If you don't know who Luigi Primo is, they brought him uh, backstage for a quick segment. He was going to show everybody how to make a good New York pizza because they're going to New York City, Queens, this Wednesday for Grand Slam. So they were going to have some fun and have Luigi Primo show you how to make a good New York pizza. So he starts flipping the dough and Ethan Page comes out of nowhere and knocks his fucking block off into Section 305. It was beautifully done, man. It was funny. A lot of people didn't like it. They don't like that type of comedy and pro wrestling. Listen, it's not like Dana Brooke being chased by the catering crusaders in WWE. That has no place in pro wrestling. That was harmless. Luigi was on air for like three seconds. Ethan Page grabbed all the fucking, the focus and the attention. I thought that only helped Ethan and I felt it was comedy. But anyway, you could make the page, uh, the, the case that Luigi Primo brought in some ratings. <laughs> and then you had Dan Housen's angle. Darby Allen, Matt Hardy's promo, Powerhouse Hobbs had his match. Um... Angle, Ricky Starks, his promo in Angle with Ricky Starks, I should say. And that all ended Q4. Now, I mean, so it was a, after the Jungle Boy lethal, it was a, it was a mishmash of a lot of, of a lot of shit. And somehow they, get, they went up into Q5. Are you ready for this? Q5. Now, now, uh, full transparency, Q5 is the start of a new hour. That's the 9 o'clock Eastern time anyway. That's the new hour, 9 o'clock slot. So you're going to get some people that might be interested. Their show just got over 8 to 9. So they're going to flip through the channels. And now they're now they're flipping through. And you guys, from Q4 to Q5, you went up um, one. So what would you say? 13, 
23,000 viewers to the highest rated segment, highest rated quarter of the entire night, even beating the top of the show. 1.210, man. 1,210,000. Death Triangles promo. Swerve in our glory versus Lucha Brothers with help from a pitcher-in-pitcher commercial so they didn't have to break away. That tremendously helps. And the Acclaims live promo. Pack had a promo and Angle Orange with Orange Cassidy. So a little bit of a mishmash there as well for Q5, but it was the right mishmash that kept people interested because they pulled their highest rating at a one two one zero. What the fuck? <laughs> Are you kidding me, bro? Like... Guys, we've seen some really good AEW shows, right? Shows that when it was done, we all came together and said, that, sh- that should have been a 1.5. 1. <laughs> 1.5. I mean, that's how good the show was. This show did not seem like it was anything special. I, I mean, I'm-, I'm going over it now with you guys, and I, s- I saw p- most of it in real time, live. It didn't seem like anything special. There was some good stuff, no doubt. Some comedy even with Luigi. But, I mean, for this to be the show that almost hits 1.2, I never saw it coming. Not with these type of matches and this type of show, but people were fucking tuning in. Unless we find out that this was somehow a mistake. I mean, Tony Khan was riding on cloud nine Wednesday night. The only real dip came in Q6. So they had their highest rating se- rated segment at 1,210,000. And then you dipped dramatically for Q6. Unfortunately, this is the ladies and this always happens with them. And it's very sad. Tony Storm and Athena had a promo. And then you saw those two, Tony Storm and Athena versus Serena Deeb and Britt Baker in a tag team match. They did have the... Um, they had the pleasure of having pitcher and pitcher, which again greatly helps. But they were going to need more than that if they were going to sustain one million two hundred ten thousand. Um, because I don't know if that many people needed to see a tag team match with no reasoning behind it, and just to see your champion lose. By the way, because that's how the match ended. Tony Storm, your champion, just gets beat. She just—I know there was some interference. I think she ran into a steel chair. Okay. Does your champion have to lose? I don't know, man. I, it's just, that's what I mean about lack of care. It's not just what Vince McMahon lacked in WWE for the women. Tony Khan doesn't know how to properly book his women's division, and that's evident. And I hope that changes because it shows you how many people just choose to not care. And with this match, they lost from Q5. Man, over 100,000, right? 1186, 14, 24. So off the top of my don't piece, I'm going to say they lost 124,000 people. The biggest drop of the night by a landslide. 124,000 people chose to not watch that ladies match. But there's still over a million. This is what's, I, I mean, usually you're going to see that in like 800,000. It'll still be the low part of the night, but 800. I mean, there's still over a million guys. And then once people found out that the ladies were off the TV, again, it's so sad to say, but once they found that out, that 124,000 came back. And then some actually, because Q7 pulled in 1,156,000. So that would be, or or no, that would be less than 124, not more. What am I saying? (laughs) Math, BC, math. So once the ladies' match went on, a lot of people actually chose not to come back. That's the sad truth. I thought they all came back. They did not. See, and that's what happens when you put something on that people are not into. They'll just find something else. But, but, 14 and 56, let's make that 70. 70, 70,000 people came back uh, for Q7. And a little time out, too. I had to go back because I forgot to mention what was in Q7. That would be nice, right? And that was Smart Mark Sterling's promo and Brian Danielson and Chris Jericho's entrances. They were in the main event. We'll get to Q8 in a, in a second. But it was just entrances in Smart Mark Sterling, and they pulled a 1156, 1,156,000. 
again, if you follow these numbers, this is this doesn't even make sense. I'm proud of them. Congratulations. It's just out of the normal by a landslide. And again, it shows you that a lot of people made a concentrated effort not to watch the women. Because a lot of those 70,000 fans that came back the very next quarter, a lot of them were probably from uh, the 124,000 that left because the ladies came on. Um, you, you just, you know that, man. 1156. And it wasn't even, uh, man, it's smart Mark Sterling. <laughs> I mean, this doesn't scream must see TV, it's the entrances. And they're pulling in a, a, a quarterly rated segment that is beating most dynamites every week. And then you go into Q8, which garnered another 32,000. Again, they gained 32,000 in the main event. You say, BC, I expect that. It's the main event. That's not how it works, guys. Usually, again, you see the dotted line underneath the actual number this week. That dotted line is the usual, that's the trajectory of every single dynamite. It, it, it just... It tapers off as the night goes on. Even the main event tapers off. You lose viewers. I mean, this gained 32,000. Again, I think a lot of that 32,000, just like the 70,000 that was in Q7, if you add that together, that's 102,000 viewers. I think a lot of them were the 124,000 that the women lost. I don't think it's a coincidence that a, a lot of that 124,000 came back over the next two segments. They were just waiting for the ladies to be off. And again, that is so fucking tragic. And I hope that Tony Khan finds a way to make the ladies relevant. Uh, same thing in, in WWE. I mean, you see the talent over there. And I just feel the booking is so off and it's not helping them. But 32,000 more viewers for the main event. Danielson versus Jericho. Winner goes on to take Mox. On at Grand Slam to find out who the new AEW World Heavyweight Champion is. Um, and that pulled in 1188. Again, the main event, the end segment, Q8, only lost 10,000 viewers from the start of the show. And the whole middle of the show never dipped under a million. It was almost a straight line, if not for the ladies' uh, Q6 segment. It was a straight line. Of it would have been over one one, the entire show would have been over one one. Again, there's just this disinterest for the women, but uh, that's astronomical. And even the ladies who were the lowest rated segment at one million eighty six thousand, again eighty six thousand viewers over a million. That beats out CM Punk and Mox's show from a couple of weeks ago, right? That show had high expectations. Tony Khan was most likely at least hoping for a 1.2 in the rating for that show. That show pulled in 1,049,000 viewers. The ladies, you can say what you want about them, their segment got more than that entire show. 1,086,000. Their segment pulled in a better rating than most Dynamites, including the three that just went over a million these past three weeks. So you can look at it as a huge negative for the ladies, and I know because it is, but you can also see a lot of positive there, man. A million plus people still stayed tuned with the, with the women. That's got to be a glimmer of hope. Tony Khan just needs to give a shit and really give them the time of day. This, this, what we are witnessing, uh, I'm, it, I'm shook by it, man. And a lot of industry professionals are shocked by these numbers. Um, this was not the show that we thought this would happen on. If you gave me these numbers and it was the post AEW all out show, maybe I can believe this. This still would be too beautiful of a fucking sight. I, I wouldn't even think that show would stay at a consistent line. But, uh, you know, fucking around with 1.2 million. Or maybe Mox and CM Punk. Maybe that show, I would believe this. And even that show, I wouldn't believe would be a straight line near 1 2. So this is just, it's mind-boggling, man. Um, and they're 18 to 49. Their, their, their demo was fucking on top of the charts as well. You see the demo down below in the green, and you see the, the, how that tapers off usually too. That just did not happen. Shocking, man. Absolutely. Hey, congratulations to Tony Khan and AEW. Uh, I mean, we all have fun with Tony Khan, how he he brags every time anything good happens in AEW instead of just staying humbled and just stay off social and just let it be. 
he's right on social a minute after the numbers break and he's fucking, you know, he's thanking everybody and touting the numbers. But listen, if there's ever a time to take a victory lap, this is this is the time. I mean, I'm sure even he is shook. <laughs> I'm sure even Tony Khan doesn't know how he got this fucking number out of the fucking thin blue air, bro. But you know what? He did it. Now just keep that shit up. You know, light a fire under your own ass, Tony Khan, and keep putting out fucking content that everybody um, is into. You know, it's, it's good to stay true to your niche, but don't be afraid to expand. Isn't it funny how just last week, uh, after the number last week, Tony Khan vowed that going forward, he is going to produce uh, the best possible product for all wrestling fans and he capitalized all he never used to do that he was all about just his niche audience now he's for all wrestling fans um take that as you will but it seems like a lot more people are tuning in now and this is at a perfect time because the tide had went over to triple h when he took over from wwe uh for wwe over vince Supposedly, anyway, we don't know how much, but you know, how much is smoke and mirrors? That's another story. But the momentum went with Triple H, and he started putting over 2.0 in the ratings on Raw. I mean, Raw had not seen those numbers in the longest of times. And then this week, he got hurt by Monday Night Football, and the show just wasn't as good as we were hoping it was going to. It was hyped up pretty good, it didn't deliver as good as we thought it would. So that mixed in with some football. You add in a little bit of Emmy Awards. And Triple H lost 300,000 viewers-ish. Maybe even a little more. But he came in at a 1.7 for Monday Night Raw. So they went backwards over 300,000 viewers. Tony Khan went up 150,000 viewers. Triple H is fucking around with 1.7 this week. Tony Khan is fucking around with 1.2. They're back to only within 500,000 viewers of one another. One company had a 50-year head start. Isht. Not bad. Not bad, man. This momentum swing, it's, it looked like Triple H had all of it. <laughs> and then Tony Khan, this real-life backstage brawl and all this real-life drama with CM Punk and the Elite, it somehow lit a fire under not just the company's ass, but the fans asked to give a shit about the company. And Tony Khan is the big winner here. And who knows? Maybe in the long run, the fans are going to be the ultimate winners if the shows keep getting better and better. BC Amplified, that's the breakdown. Until next time, Top Guy, and I'm fucking out. Check you.